Hi folks, welcome to my bit retro journal. Um, I'm here with my Amiga, um, working on, um, just trying to actually, um, uh, play some games on it. Um, so I have, um, I've got an SD card in here, um, with, it gives me about 1.5 gigabytes of disk space. Um, I don't have anything else though, so I could, um, open this up, take the SD card out and, you know, use UAE, but I don't want to keep opening this up and I kind of want to have a, a better channel from my from the emulator into the Amiga without having to constantly open this up because I did close this up and did have issues with the keyboard membrane even though it was relatively new so I don't really want to constantly do that so I'm finding other ways now I, a while back I did a video on this disk masher and um, it allowed you to basically uh, take uh, like an ADF file in WinUAE that's mounted as a disk and then maybe grab half the sectors as a dump, put it on a, uh, an IBM PC floppy and then uh, use DMS here to then write the disk. And that works, but I found a better way of doing that and that is to use zip. So it turns out that I actually have a utility on here and let me show you what I have. Um, uh, before I start this, though, in order for this to work, just similar with Disk Masher, um, I'm going to have to use uh, the nice thing that Workbench 2 gives you is the ability to read MS-DOS files. And so, um, yeah, if I run this driver, and now that I have a, a hard disk in here as an um, ID SD card, and uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm going to use the MS-DOS um, drive as the interface. Now, I had to do something similar on the QL, um, um, uh, and I had a video on that. Basically, my SD card reader was bad, and, and since I, I didn't have a spare floppy drive, even though I have a floppy controller for this, I was using the old um, micro cartridges, which are these things right here. And so what I had to do for that is do a serial interface between that and my PC, and I was able to basically um, pipe the info from the serial interface uh, onto the micro drives. Now, the difference between the Amiga and the um, QL is that the QL is more like the Mac in that it has additional information uh, uh, on the file headers. On the Mac, you have sort of a resource and data fork. On the QL, you have the data, but then there's a little bit of information that tells you how much uh, heap space or data, and it's called data size. I think it's how much heap space you need. And so you can't simply copy an executable. It won't work. And so I had a small archive program it was about 3K that I could turn into a self-extractable basic program that uh, uh, contained a small basic header and then the rest were data statements for each byte. Turned the 3K program into a 14K program. I was able to pipe it over from uh, through serial and then ex uh, create it, just running the basic program. That created the archiver. And once I had my archiver, I could then bring over archived files um, and un-extract unex them, and then I would build an entire library of software, which is what I did, and I had a video on that that you recently saw. Um, and so I'm kind of doing a similar thing here. I'm going to be using Zip, which I have installed. Let me show you. Under Utilities. Um, so I have these two programs that I need. Z uh, zip, uh, or Unzip. I don't have Zip. I have Zip on my... Um, well, I can actually just use Microsoft's uh, Zip or 7Z, 7 Zips uh, Zip. Uh, this will work with it. And then I also have this TS GUI, which will basically take an ADF file and, and turn it into a floppy. So what I want to do today is I have Lemmings as a um, um, two ADF files, and I want to actually bring them over here and copy them onto two of these disks uh, so I can play Lemmings. And so I was going to show you how I did that. Or how I'm going to do that, and I, I did run into a little bit of problems. So the one negative part about using MS DOS, uh, so these are actually um, uh, empty uh, um, Amiga formatted 880k floppies. This, on the other hand, got these marked with uh, tan and blue. This, on the other hand, is a, a 720k floppy, and so the problem is this floppy is not as big. So generally, if I can zip up an ADF and have it be less than 720, it works. But one of the issues I run into is um, sometimes even a zipped up ADF file, because it already contains compressed information, is bigger than that. And so what I figured out how to do is I can split the file. There's a neat little application on the um, oh, 
uh, on Windows 7 uh, or on Windows in general called file, uh, Free File Splitter. And I found that app. It's a small app and it lets you split it on any, um, in any way. And then this uh, program has this really cool um, unzip, which lets you basically uh, unzip a file and pipe it into another file. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two halves of my one of the uh, Lemmings ADF files that are two halves where, where the combined is too big to fit on in a 720k floppy and I'm going to uh, unzip them into the same file, create an ADF and then it, I'm able to extend it. I think I can do that so I haven't done it yet but uh, I, I have played around with small files and it seems to work so that's what I'm going to do today. Let me demonstrate that to you on, on my Windows machine so let's do that. Here I am, uh, so this is the uh, software I found called Free File Splitter, and it's a really simple little app. It's on www.filesplitter.org, and it actually downloads as an executable, believe it or not. Um, and I downloaded it here. So here are my two uh, files, and you'll notice that if I just do a send to compressed folder, this one, I call it Lemming 1, because, um, or let's just call it Lem 1. Um, and you'll see that that one is 606k in size, so that's good. But if I do this one and compress it, uh, you'll see that it's too big. It needs to be 720,000 uh, bytes, so 713 kilobytes. So what I need to do is run this program. Don't always ask. <clears throat> okay, the file I want to split is 2. And I want to do it in kilobytes. Uh, and I'm just going to split it at the, um, let's, let's do 500. That's why. Okay, split. Yeah, I want two chunks. There we go. So now I have one that's 500 kilobytes and one that's 380 kilobytes. And I can zip those up. Just send it to zip. Call that, uh, Let's call it um, lem 28 and then zip this up. Um, and let's call that lem 2 b There we go. And so these are the three files that I'm going to uh, copy one at a time onto. Um, I have a floppy drive in here. You can hear it. And so I'm going to copy these one at a time. Um, this one is the biggest. We'll do this one first and then I'll show you one other idiosyncrasy I have on my Amiga that I um, makes this a little bit trickier and I don't know what's going on but um, as this is copying let's go back to the Amiga and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Back on the Amiga um, so let me show you what I'm talking about. If I go and take this MS-DOS file and I need to do a show um, all on that and uh, if I just copy this over here, it's going to take a little bit. But what happens, and so again, I'm copying this onto an SD card. Now, the, the what it is, is it's an IDE to compact flash card. And then in there, I have a compact flash to SD adapter. And in that, I have an SD to micro SD adapter. And then I have my one point, uh, I think it's actually a four gigabyte card and I've formatted it to 1.5 gigabytes. Now the nice thing about this whole setup is that uh, the particular ID to compact flash adapter actually causes my hard disk light to, I don't know if you can see it barely right there. You'll see it flash. Let me see if I can move this a little bit for you. Yep. You'll see it flash. Um, so I didn't have to do anything special to get the hard disk light to flash, which is really nice. Um, but what you'll see happening is as soon as this is copied, I'm going to go into command shell mode. So it's copied. So now I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to close this and I'm just going to open up a command shell and close this as well. And let me open up a command shell, which is right here. Yeah, move this down, close this. So um, if I go, and say CD, oops, CD expansion, CD utilities, CD unzip. And if I say unzip, lem1zip, um, 
I believe what's going to happen is it's going to error out. Maybe this time it won't. But in the past it has. It's just giving me an error, some sort of read. Um, yeah, invalid compressed data to inflate. I have no idea why that's doing that. Because if I do this on UAE, it works. Um, and again, if you take a look at this file, it basically... Oops. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, if it basically... That was funny. Uh, if I do information on that, it says that it's only 200k in size. And it changes. It's not always the same. So I'm not sure what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and delete this file. Uh, I'll do it again. Okay. So this time, the way I can get this to work is just to say the file is on here. I can just say unzip PC0. So if I do it on the disk itself uh, and just go do that, um, you tell me what's why that why this works and you know using the MS DOS disk as the source, but when I copy it over to my SD card, it gives this uh, uh, invalid compressed data to inflate error. Whereas if I do it on my you know Win UAE on a hard disk, it works perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do here, so just to show you that this uh, is going to work. Um, uh, once this it's done this, I'm going to use TS GUI, uh, I forget what it stands for, to generate the ADF file. And I'm going to use one of my uh, spare disks that I have right here. Um, but this is basically inflating the 600K uh, from the disk with no errors. And you'll see as soon as it's finished, I will show you what the final result is. But yeah, I haven't figured out what's going on here. And uh, so if one of my Amiga viewers can let me know why my SD card is giving me errors when it doesn't give me errors in anything else. I mean, able to run a PC emulator off of it, able to do most of anything on it, but the unzip program just doesn't like it and uh, ended up installing various versions of unzip and finally came to the conclusion that the error must be the IDE interface maybe an SD card. So if it's a common error, I'd love to know about it. But it's able to do the use the MS-DOS driver with no problem. So I don't know. But you can see the, the disk lights work really nicely in there. So I'm really happy with the configuration. Again, I, I could do this so much faster by opening this up or keeping this open, but I kind of wanted to have my Amiga in one piece, just like I have my QL in one piece. And so trying to find ways. What I need is to get a, a PCIMC8 card with an SD card reader. That's probably the best way of doing it. But so here we go. It's copied it. So now if I use, so I want to popping this out. Um, it's always a pain. I actually have a question. Could you um, create a, a inject eject drive mechanism like the Macintosh has for the Amiga? Has anybody ever done that? That would be so much more convenient. All right. Going in here and running this cool little program, what this does is it's going to basically write the ADF file. So I find it and uh, I need to go volumes. It's on here and it's right there. I keep double clicking, that's why. And luckily, I clicked the right one. And then it's going to write to that. And then file to disk. I likely fast forward this. Yeah, so that worked really nicely. Um, let's quit that. And uh, it has created the file, which is not readable. So it's some sort of weird format. Again, I'm a noob and Amiga. Definitely. Uh, um, I've done other files like that, though, so I think it's it's an NDOS file. I don't know what that means, but hopefully this will run. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's go back to um, now doing the next file for this, which is going to be uh, in two parts. And I have the um, oops, 
PC0. So this is the Lemmings uh, 2 part 1, or what I call 2A, which is a 500k one. So this time what I want to use is fun uh, F uh, um, file unzip, or yeah, I think that's what it stands for, unzip. And you're going to say PC0 uh, lem 2 a zip, and you're going to route this to a file. So I'm just going to use a routing operator and say, uh, what do we want to call it? Uh, lemmings disk2.edf. So this is going to write the first half of the file. Are you ready? And I will probably uh, transition to it because there's nothing to see here. So. <laughs> Having copied that file, if you take a look at uh, PC0, you'll see now that it's lem2b. And if I can just uh, change this to b, it's got to do two things. This, and if I, do, if I do double, it'll concatenate. Just like in Unix, this will concatenate. And uh, this should give me a file the same size as lemmings disk1, and it should actually uh, copy onto a new disk. So. Uh, we'll have to, again, uh, probably transition to the end of it because it's going to take a little bit of time. So let's do that. And we're done. So let's take a look at what uh, Lemmings 2 looks like. So this is, just to be clear, um, it, this is the Lemmings 2 ADF. And if I look at this, it should be the same size. Um, yep, yeah, 9011220. So I'm pretty confident this is going to work. So let me close this up. Throw in a new disk. Uh, so this one has to be ejected. And then this one gets in inserted. Should say empty. Yep. And uh, again, run this program. And, you know, two parts of a, uh, we'll see if concatenating two parts of, of half a file. So, uh, volumes so you click it once click it once click it once click it once select that one and then select empty and copy it and i will once again fast forward over that okay that really worked uh and it didn't give an error so let's hope that um, I'm going to eject this one. I'm going to insert the other one. And the nice thing about the Amiga is you can just literally power things off. I'm going to close these. Actually, it doesn't really remember what you did. But I'm going to close these and just power it off. And with the lemmings disk in this should actually boot to lemmings oh that's what it did on yep thumbs up again i don't have audio hooked up to this but i do think audio works so yeah game without audio is not that much fun but let's click it's going to ask for the second disk so that'll show us whether or not the second disk will actually work or not expanded ram detected and utilized psychosis presents and i actually do have a version of lemmings on my sega system but yeah lemmings is always a fun game to play and i also have played it on the pc um so it's always a cool game to play um kind of games that i like uh let me just at one point i think Still doing its thing. But I guess I, I still haven't discovered WHD load, so I guess I will eventually discover what that is all about and get rid of this idea of um, floppy based um, programs. But um, yeah, I think this is an intro. I'm going to skip that intro. The graphics are beautiful though, so you got to give, you know, give it credit to the graphics uh, i think it's going to ask for the second disc now yeah so and i don't think you have to switch discs again so this will be the the one thing i haven't done yet is whether this disc actually will work or not 
um, but should see if it gives you an error or not. It's reading it. All right, looks like it's working. One player. And new level of fun, yeah. Well, that's what I want to have is fun. That looks a lot like the uh, Sega version, Sega Genesis version. Um, oh, I do remember this level. Oh, it's hitting a disc. Oh, maybe it's having trouble reading it. These are also high density discs. So you can see that I've covered the uh, high density marks. Oh, no, it's working. Uh, I want someone that digs. There we go. Yep. That's an easy level. <laughs> but, oh, cool. Look, we've got uh, lemmings working. Um, we should get 100% because we have plenty of time. But yeah, lemmings on my Amiga 600, and I was able to... Um, you know, be able to transfer ADF files. Again, I, I have an internal SD card. I could open this up, plug my SD card and mount it somehow on WinUE and set it up this way. But then I'd be in this thing constantly opening it up and I'm just trying to avoid doing that. So I think this is a better method because I don't use my Amiga all that much. And I think if I were to use it a lot, um, I would probably get a PCMCA SD reader. Uh, I also have a, another thing I want to work on is I have a zip drive that I could use um, to, um, wow, that's a, so I don't know if that's, obviously it's working, but so again, these are high density disks, so I don't know if that's causing an issue. It's definitely loud. Here's the next level. Um, but, uh, I mean, is he gonna die? Uh oh. Yeah, I think they're dying. Okay, so I think you gotta st uh, stop. Stop. What are you. <laughs> oh my god, everyone died. So you have literally just. You give everyone a parachute? I guess this is a very fun level. Yep, I did not succeed. Oh! I rescued. <laughs> this is a ridiculously easy level. Okay, uh, yeah. I need to save five lemmings. Um, well, this is working. Um, and uh, first game I'm playing on the Amiga is Lemmings. I don't know if that's appropriate or not. But um, in any case, I think I'll finish up here with Lemmings. And... Uh, what are you supposed to do? Oh, there's a block, right? So you're going to have to uh, block. There we go. I see. It's it's a simple block. Okay. Um, in any case, I'm going to finish up playing here. It's kind of fun. And um, thanks for joining me. And I'll see you guys next time.